Let's talk about the Gustin gang up in Boston. They there were no actual Gustins in the gang. Gustin is a dead end street in in um, South Boston where they grew up. The gang was formed by the brothers Frank and Steve. Frank was definitely the leader. Steve had been an Olympic boxer. He was vicious. He beat up people. For the game. He beat up a lot of cops. Uh, he seemed to take some sort of joy in that. He took a senior officer uh, and beat him enough to put him in the hospital for quite a while. There was a younger brother, Jimmy, who later joined the gang. The brothers, John, William, and Henry, avoided the underworld and took the straight life. Their parents were Patrick and Mary, who emigrated from Ireland. Around 1915, the brothers entered into crime. But they, their specialty was hijacking trucks. There were a lot of factories in New England in those days, and they'd wait outside the gates, and they'd see what truck. Maybe they had informants inside, and they'd say, well, that truck is filled with something they knew they can get rid of quickly. Um, so they filed the truck, throw the driver out, steal the truck, sell the stuff. Uh, they were really well connected through their lawyer, John McCormick. Uh, he was really politically connected. He was a state senator at the time. McCormick later in, in a very political town. Boston is political like Chicago is. Uh, McCormick went on to be Speaker of the House of Representatives in about 1960. When John Kennedy was president at that time, the Speaker of the House, McCormick, the Attorney General, and the President of the United States were or all Irish Americans. And so was the leader of the Senate, although for the life of me, I can't remember his name. So even with McCormick's help, Frank Wallace managed to get arrested 25 times. He never really did any serious jail time, except for one time when he made it very clear to the world that he was going to execute a policeman who had done something to him. When Prohibition came along, they really didn't have any money to invest. They had to start a Prohibition racket. They had gone up to Canada to get liquor and bring it down, but there was a lot of money up front needed for that. It was a long haul, and they just thought, you know what, we steal trucks. Why don't we just keep stealing trucks? So they stole uh, bootleg trucks that belonged to other gangs. Um, they made the mistake of stealing trucks, apparently in one haul. They got quite a few trucks that belonged to Joe Lombardo, who was then the Italian boss of the North End, but he was also the underboss of what would become the New England Mafia. Uh, he called for a meeting at the CK Importing Company on 317 Hanover Street. So Frankie Wallace showed up with his lieutenant, Dodo Walsh, Bernard Walsh, and they brought along a gunner named Timmy Coffey with them. So Lombardo had no intention of talking this through. He had three gunners waiting in an adjacent office. When they walked in, he said, Lombardo said, have a seat, Frank. And when he did, his three, that was the, the, the hint to come in. The other three guys came in the room blasting. So they, they killed Walsh immediately. He ran. He tripped and fell on the stairs. And when he got up, they shot him dead. Uh, Frankie Walsh got hit. He managed to run into another office, a separate office belonging to someone who wasn't involved with all this. When the bullet, bullet hit him, he went down head first and his head got stuck in the legs of a chair. There's a picture of it here. Uh, Timmy Coffey ran, their guy Coffey ran, he hid in a broom closet, so he managed to survive. After that, the gang, there was a lot of infighting with the Gustins uh, between themselves, other Irish gangs. They just, they were undisciplined. And the gang essentially fell apart after that. Frank was the brains in the operation. Steve Wallace died in 1967, and Jimmy the last remaining brother died in 1968.